Hello everyone, here we are for a tour on the USS Drum. The Drum is the oldest U.S. surviving submarine and one of the top ten producers during World War II. Let's start out by going aboard. The Drum is part of the Gato class and it was actually the first ship produced in the Gato class. Here we are in the forward torpedo room. The forward torpedo room has six tubes and the aft torpedo room four tubes. The ship could carry 24 weapons, including weapons loaded in the tubes. It could shoot the steam powered torpedoes earlier in the war and then as the war progressed the electric powered torpedoes which were a little slower but didn't have the bubble trail. If you look down here, you'll see artwork of the USS Drum drawn by none other than Walt Disney himself. Some other memorabilia and some pictures of some famous sinkings. Crew pictures. And of course, this is a National Historic Landmark. And I can't say enough about what excellent condition the people, the volunteers that work on this boat, how great a job they've done keeping it in such fabulous shape. And now we're coming up on one of the escape trunks, which you could use to exit the submarine while it's underwater. You go up into the trunk, you shut the lowered hatch, you fill up the trunk with water, equalize the pressure, and you open the under hatch. One of the crew showers here. Here's the officer's galley. That's looking into the wardroom there. And over here is one of the two man staterooms. the little wardroom here where the officers could eat and relax and plan things. Second stateroom here. And this is the captain's stateroom. Here's a picture of Howard Gilmore, famous Medal of Honor winner, sacrificed his life to save his submarine.
Here's a letter signed by Admiral Lockwood, the famous commander of the Pacific Submarine Force in World War II. And here's the executive officer's stateroom. And here's the chief petty officer's five man bunk room. On the right is the helm for steering and ordering up engine orders for the maneuvering room. Then that's the control panel for the ballast tank vents and flood valves. So you open the flood valves and the vents and the ballast tanks fill with seawater and then you submerge and then you fine tune your submerging with auxiliary tanks. Here we got the control stations for the bow planes and the stern planes. And there's a lot of depth gauges, shallow depth gauges and deeper depth gauges. And trim angle. And back here is where you can control pumping water in and out of the auxiliary tanks to help precisely balance the ship. Okay, so the conning tower is closed right now, but I, we have some pictures from an earlier visit. That's facing forward with the uh, auxiliary helm control. That's facing aft with the plot. That's a picture of the torpedo data computer. And here's some close-ups of each of the sections of the torpedo data computer. Very advanced for its time. And that's a periscope and where you will fire the different tubes. There's the different ship alarms there. And there's the radio room. Now we're coming up on the galley where all the food is prepared. Right in there. And 
And then up here is the cruise mess, where the meals are served, movies can be shown, and other gatherings. Here's the wartime sailing list of crew members. Here's another escape trunk. It's also a way to get on and off the submarine when you're tied alongside the pier. Several bunks in here. They don't have anywhere near as many as there would be on an actual ship in time of war. Here's a nice spacious restroom for you. And a shower and washing machine. So this is the forward diesel compartment. This is the first two of four diesel engines that power the submarine and charge the battery. On the surface you could do any combination of charging the battery and sending power to the propellers. Fairbanks Morse diesels. And here's the aft diesel compartment with two more diesel engines. As you may have noticed, there's just one level through the submarine. 
There's some lower levels you can get to, but not with connecting passageways. You put the batteries down there, you have frozen food storage, you have tanks, things like that. This is a cool cutaway of the engine. And one of the pistons and piston rods. And as you can see, these engines need a lot of air. A lot of electrical switch gear in here. And back here is the maneuvering area. So when you ring up a bell for a different speed up in the control room, Back here they can see it and they can configure the engines and the batteries and the diesels in all the right ways to send the power where it needs to be sent. And here's the after torpedo room with four more tubes. In both of these torpedo ribs, they used ropes and pulleys and rollers to move these torpedoes in and out of the tubes, mostly in. Here we are top side. Over there's the USS Alabama. And here's one of the escape hatches seen from the outside. So the drum is part of the USS Alabama Museum. There's the Alabama, the drum, a nice collection of mainly aircraft inside that building, and there's some tanks and guns outside. It's really nice and it has a really reasonable price and it helps support things. Here's another access for one of the escape trunks. We're not actually walking on the pressure hole right now. It's down a couple of feet. This is a structure built on top of the pressure hull. And just ahead is the conning tower. So that lower section is inside of there is where those pictures were taken with the periscope and a torpedo data computer. 
and then up here would be the stations that people would man on the surface. There's a surface search radar and both of the periscopes. And this submarine had different anti-aircraft guns, fore and aft. And then usually a five inch gun up forward. There was some variation there. Up here on the left is that sonar head that you might have seen in movies when they turn a little wheel. There's the top of that first escape trunk I showed you. For decades, this submarine was sitting in the water right behind the Alabama, and they finally got it out of the water several years ago, and have done an excellent restoration of the below water sections that were significantly corroded. Here's a great view of the bow where you can see three of the six forward torpedo tubes and the bow planes. Now again, what you're looking at here, you're also not looking at the pressure hole. The pressure hole is further inside. And due to maintenance, they cut some holes into this outer hole section. And we'll be able to look inside and see some of the things that were in there. Here's one of the holes. And inside is one of the ballast tanks that would fill up with water to submerge a ship. That's the flood valve right there covering the bottom and that's the pressure hole up above will be the vents you open both of those valves it all fills with water here's an auxiliary tank with the float for level indication well that's going to do it for this tour i hope you enjoyed it it's an outstanding submarine i encourage you all to go take a look at it Thanks for watching, everybody.